Hello everybody and welcome to a very special episode today where we're going to be talking about the CFMEU, a major construction union in Australia and what has recently been happening as of yesterday with the protests and then previously with them going under administration. I will explain all of that for you in detail so we can get a good understanding of what's happening right now in the political landscape. But just suffice to say, this is an attack on working people. It's got nothing it's got nothing to do with criminal activity and corruption. That is just a side issue. It's a wedge issue to get people to demonize the CFMEU uh, specifically. And so they can basically take away your rights and freedoms within a democratic country. There's really no other way of saying that nicely. It is pretty much, it is that dramatic. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and have a look at a video that was put out yesterday by the ABC. So that's the Australian broadcaster. So this is a public media outlet um, and we're going to see what they have to say and what the media narrative is. And I'll interject here and there to try and explain to you what the hell is going on surrounding this whole scandal because it is a scandal and not a scandal because of yeah criminal activity it's a scandal because the like working people who just try to fight for better pay and better conditions and safety at work are being attacked by big business and their mates in government it's a classic story and so that's why i think it's really important to do this special episode and talk about this while it's while it's hot all right, so let's go over and have a look at what the ABC, our credible friends at the ABC, have to say for themselves. Some live aerial shots we have now from major CFMEU protests uh, starting here in Sydney, but these are coordinated rallies taking place around the country, and we've uh, got shots of these taking place with huge numbers, as you can see there. So it's uh, thousands of CFMEU members. They've put down their tools. They're protesting against this administration takeover of the organisation. These shots that we're bringing you here now are Melbourne, as you can see. Uh, okay, and this so let's explain this. So yesterday in major cities across the country, there were protests that were organised not by the union, not by the CFMEU, who is the construction forestry maritime employees union it was not organized by them these were reactions by employees of that union and other unions who were standing in solidarity with this union so that means they were standing together because they are scared of what's going on as a reaction to the union being put under administration okay so let me explain what that means recently the government passed new legislation. Okay, so this wasn't in existence a few weeks ago. They passed new legislation to take control of the CFMEU. Specifically, they are taking control of the construction branch of that union. That is absolutely insane. Talk about, you know, crazy 1984 government control stuff here. They legislated something and it had agreement from both parties to take control of a union. Now, a union, the right to unionize is something that the UN recognizes as a human right. Forming a union is not a bad thing and people are able to get together within unions and they democratically decide the future of that union and they decide what the important issues are to fight over. What the government has effectively done here has, sh has been to shut down the power of the CFMEU. And that's why people were protesting yesterday because they fear that this government legislation, this government control that is being pushed on people to basically because the government has mates in the construction industry, big money interests who want to put a leash on the union movement, they are scared that this is going to spill over into other areas, other unions, other industries. And so they were standing together with, with the workers and the employees of the CFMEU who basically 
walked off their jobs. Now, what they are saying and what we will see in this media article is that, you know, this protest is basically illegal. These people are, you know, revolting against the system. This is a rebellion or some type of, you know, crazy, um, you know, law and order scandal where people are running riot in the street, etc., etc. It's not that. It's a protest. And guess what? The right to protest is also a UN sanctioned human right. These people are allowed to do this. This is not a problem, but this is what the media will tell you. So let's continue to see what the ABC have, you know, just basically a drip feeding us through the propaganda machine. This industrial action, or unprotected industrial action, I should say, uh, has just begun at the I'll top explain of that this in a hour. Uh, this is the shot that we're bringing you here from Brisbane at the moment. These marches, as I say, taking place in cities around the country. Uh, this follows the federal government placing the union's construction arm into administration. That came amid allegations of corrupt behaviour within the union. Now, uh, police have deployed traffic management resources. OK, a couple of things to point out here. Look at this. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with Brisbane at all, but you can see in the background there how many people are turning out to this event. People were very upset by this. You had this happening in all of the major cities around the country. People showing up in support of the union and protesting against the government taking control and stealing, stealing people's rights to form unions and associate freely. This is a crazy attack on people's freedoms and rights in a so-called democratic country. But the focus really is, is helping out big business. That's why we're here. Now she said just then, the allegations of corruption and criminal activity. Let's point to the key word here because you know, the media is always worried about saying the wrong thing just in case anyone comes after them. They are using a particular word here, allegation. There are allegations that the CFMEU has been infiltrated with criminal activities, bikies, and has been corrupt. It has undertaken corrupt practices. Allegations, meaning they are not substantiated at all. There has been no process to make sure these claims are valid and to there has been no case of this proved in any court of law or anything like that. So this has been a trial by media. We have gotten to a point where a union has been put under administration and new laws have been rushed through parliament to facilitate that process because the media has been going on nonstop about a bunch of allegations, completely unsubstantiated claims at this point. It's got nothing to do with whether this is a reality or not. This has just got to do with a story. And that's why people are scared because of what this could mean, not just for these particular working people and unions and stuff, but for our freedoms generally, our rights generally. If the government has the power to do this, why when the media just basically creates stories and starts running them nonstop, and then the government responds with draconian measures like this, bringing in legislation to take government control over free and independent organizations. This is a slippery slope, people, and we should all be pretty worried about this. Let's see what else the ABC has to say. This is along the streets to minimize any disruption. This is the shot here we're returning to from Sydney, where you can see thousands taking part. And uh, the Fair Work thousands. Ombudsman says it'll going to be monitoring this situation for any illegal industrial action. So just repeating there, it's uh, unprotected action given the status of Let's the just union it again and it, again. you can't promote it, uh, given that branch has been put into administration. And uh, what that means for those taking part is that they could have their pay docked uh, for taking part in this action today. They could face other penalties for it. Uh, that hasn't deterred them though. We can see the numbers are certainly yes, turning out there. Uh, the Sydney shot there, but as we have shown you, Melbourne and Brisbane as well, thousands taking part in these coordinated protests or rallies, I should say, across the country. Now, our reporter Elias Kluwer is in Melbourne. He joins us now. Elias, how are authorities preparing for these rallies? 
Gemma, yes. What? How will the police keep us safe from all of these angry working class people who are going to destroy our special and safe communities? Can you see the narrative that's coming out here? Like these people, like you, they just showed you footage of them walking down the street. I didn't see anything on fire. I didn't see buildings burning down and, you know, people running riot. None of that. You see people demonstrating and now it's, oh, how are the authorities going to keep us safe from these animals? This is just part of the, this is part of the indoctrination. This is part of the, the machine that paints a certain picture to keep you scared of these things. It's just how the media works. We've got to pay attention to this type of stuff, but I'll let this guy continue. Well, police say they'll have a visible presence here along uh, Trade Saw. We're currently at the intersection of Russell Street and Mackenzie Street, and you can see them all around here. Tara's pointing the camera to them now, and uh, they've put multiple diversions in place. There's an incredible amount of people here. I'm going to estimate a rough estimate of at least 15,000 here now, and they're just streaming through, loud and proud, wearing their CFMEU shirts, waving their flags. There was a chance of John Setka just before, of course. He's been embroiled in significant controversy. We'll get on this all comes after allegations were aired of serious corruption and criminality and links to bikey gangs within the CFMEU. That, of course, led to the union being placed in administration, up to 300 officials being removed from their official duties and of course now other unions point. standing in quote solidarity with the CFMEU coming out here walking off the job and standing with them at this protest and there's no shortage of construction sites here in Melbourne 19 projects worth over a billion dollars so that just gives you the Boom. scale and the enormity of did you hear that there's the secret right there 19 projects worth over a billion dollars that have been brought to a standstill due to this protest. Now, the other reporter just before in the studio was like, oh, I won't call it a protest, I'll call it a rally. But he's gone off the script, obviously, or maybe he didn't get the memo. But this is what is the real issue here. The construction industry, big business, are pissed off because they don't have control, absolute control, of their workers. And this is why the CFMEU was put under administration, because they were militant, as in they are organized, and they were asking for more stuff. They have been on the, they have been on the attack recently about getting a five to six percent pay increase for their workers. So apparently CFMEU employees or members are some of the highest paid construction workers in the country on average. And Australian construction workers across the planet are some of the best paid construction workers in the world. Do you know why? Because we have a strong union movement. The reason why there is more money going into working people's pockets in the construction industry is because of the union movement and big business in the construction industry are upset about that. And here we go. This is why the protests are being watched so carefully and we need to have law enforcement there just to make sure things don't get out of hand. And really, this is unprotected industrial action. So really, should we be supporting any of this in the first place? This is illegal. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's use a funny analogy for it. Okay, unprotected industrial action is like having unprotected sex. Okay, so if you don't wear a condom, you are taking a risk that you might get a disease or get pregnant or something like that. Okay, so if you take unprotected industrial action, you are taking a risk that you are not protected by anyone taking action against you for taking on that industrial action. So that includes, you know, going on strike, protesting, working, walking off the job, um, doing particular work bans. So saying that you're not going to do particular functions with in your role. These are types of industrial action measures that workers have at their disposal, and it has to be protected in order for it to be legal. What the hell does that mean? Well, the government, the Fair Work Commission, 
has a list of things that are considered protected and unprotected. And how do you protect yourself? If you want to do industrial action as a worker, well, you have to get approval from the Fair Work Commission. That's right. You have to do paperwork if you are upset and you want to show that in a democratic society. This is bureaucracy gone mad and it exists to control working people. Okay, so let's use a better analogy then. Okay, not just, it'd be like if sex itself, sexual intercourse was regulated by the government. And so if you wanted to go out and have a good time and have a one night stand with someone, you had to fill out a government form first and get it approved by the government before you got on the good foot and did the bad thing. That's what it means to be protected and unprotected in industrial action. Now, the funny thing about this unprotected thing is that the unions themselves, especially in the CFMEU, they have not sanctioned this. This is not coming from the heads of these departments. They got rid of them. These are, this is actual grassroots stuff. The people themselves, the workers themselves have got together, had a chat about this and why this is so outrageous for them and they've decided to put their tool down tools down and walk off the job anyway despite the risks despite the fact that they might not get paid for the day's work or anything like that despite the risks they are more worried about what the government and big business has done here and they want their voices heard they think that's more important to them than the risk of having action taken against them. Isn't that incredible? But they're not saying it like this, the media. Oh no, oh, it's unprotected. And they could suffer some, some job losses and, and they could be, you know what's really about what it comes down to with unprotected industrial action? If the business loses money, they have the right to sue people. So they could sue the union, but like, it wasn't sanctioned by the unions anyway, or they could start suing workers and people that worked off the job for their financial losses. That's what this is all about. Who has the right to sue who? You can see what our priorities are in this country. It's about suing people and helping big business. That's really all this comes down to, and it's pretty outrageous, I might say. If this disruptions being expected today, but as we see here, it's just an incredible amount of people. They were chanting just before. It almost sounded like a football match when they roared in support of uh, CMF, former CFMEU Secretary John Setka. So this is, of course, unprotected industrial action. Unprotected which means again. employers can uh, pr take proceedings to remove up to four hours of pay or even remove them from their positions. Um, now, we're hoping, well, police are hoping and politicians are hoping that we don't see a repeat of the 2021 um, industrial strike and, and when um, construction workers walked off the job where we saw several violent incidents. The Premier of Victoria spoke to that today, as did the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Let's have a listen to him. Uh, what we want to do, though, is to make sure that their union is free of corruption. That is in the There's interest of all trade unionists. Uh, trade unions do a great job defending occupational health and safety, yeah, they do. Uh, campaigning for better wages and conditions for their members. Uh, what they shouldn't be engaged in is the sort of activity that John Secca and others have been. Based on what? Here in Victoria, Gemma, an independent uh, review or probe into this to the construction industry is currently taking place. We're expected to get the interim report on that by Friday. Now, in terms of this protest, though, they're expected to walk up Russell Street, perhaps end at State Parliament. We're not quite sure. They'll continue chanting. Okay. They'll continue Let's chanting. Let's have a chat, John though, Setka's about name, John Setka and what it was that Albanese was going on about before. Okay, yes, unions are very important to protect working people's rights, get better pay, better conditions, safety at work, and all of that sort of stuff. But this is what is happening here. They are making this story about it about only criminal activity in the unions um, and corruption. Now, this is funny because if the government really cared about corruption, the entire corrupt the, the entire construction industry 
is full of links to organized crime groups and it is full of corruption. It's just, it's almost just a well-known fact. Like most Australian people are aware that construction deals with corruption when it comes to politics and influencing politicians. And there's links to bikies and organized crime groups in the construction industry generally, including the business sector. So the big businesses themselves, the developers themselves are in bed with criminals and are engaging heavily in corrupt practices. And they're just pretending like this is only happening in the union. I'm not saying that these allegations might are not true. There might be some substance to them, but at this point they have been completely unsubstantiated and they've used just allegations to put a, to, to rush in legislation, to put a union under administration and take away the control of a private organization from its members. This is an attack on democracy itself and people's rights and freedoms in a supposed liberal society. This is completely crazy. And that's why people are out and protesting because they are worried about Jim, this stuff. Uh, it'll be interesting to see it's nothing how it ends up. We'll be back with you at midday to, uh, to give everyone an update. Well, that's it. Like, what can we say more than we've said already? I need to just, you know, run over some things for you. The administration can last for three to five years. All right. Business people have already come out. So business people in the construction industry have already come out flabbergasted at how amazing it is that the government was able to move so fast and put them under administration. They think this is the best thing that's happened in the construction industry for them in like 40 years. They have got a significant win here because a big and powerful union that really gets a lot of wins on the board for their construction workers in terms of their pay and their safety conditions, they have been effectively neutralized because the government now controls that union. And so some people might be like, all right, well, maybe it's okay having the Labour Party or a Labour government in charge. Well, like, you know, the Labour government might not be in power after the next election, and then you'll have probably a Liberal government in control of a union. And we know how much the Liberals love unions. So what is that going to look like? The other thing is that this administrator has apparently said that they're just going to let everything run as normal. Nothing will change. Only time will tell. But this person is on a cushy $600,000 a year pay packet. I wonder what all of the members are on all of the average construction workers that are part of that industry. But like a government appointed stooge basically is going to get in and have a cushy job and he's going to yeah let the CFMEU continue with its usual practices. Yeah, I'd like to see how that one unfolds. But like I have absolutely no faith in that. Now, John Setka, that's that's I don't know. I don't know what to say really about there. You'll have to go and watch some of the, the media articles and you know some of the um, yeah some of the the reports that have come out on him. But basically, he was he stepped down because of the pressure around the, surrounding these allegations. That's it, allegations. That's why he stepped down. It's really as simple as that. Now he goes into other things. He's talked about, you know, whether there is associations with criminals and all of that sort of stuff in the unions. And he said it himself. Yes, there is criminal activity in the construction industry at large. And so why the witch hunt on this particular union? That's the million dollar question here. So we're just gonna have to keep watching to see how this unfolds, but I've tried to explain and give you as much detail about what is really happening here. But this is the takeaway. This is an attack on the working class. This is class warfare. The business, the big business community in the construction center, in the construction sector were upset and pissed off at the power of the CFMEU. They've lodged a campaign, an attack campaign through their friends in the corporate media, and they have shut down one of the biggest and most militant 
unions in the construction industry. Now the union movement at large is scared and rightfully so. This is a key element, a key story that has been going on since the industrial revolution a few hundred years ago. This is a theme that runs through. They will shut unions down once they get the chance and they will do it on very flimsy pretexts. And that's exactly what we have seen today. And the response from people is rather surprising, actually. They chose to go out and use their rights in a free country to show that by peacefully protesting, by rallying and showing or making sure their voice was heard, that they are dissatisfied with this outcome and they are generally concerned about the way things are running. This is an age old story and it's called class warfare. The big money interests, the corporations, they have the government in their hands and they don't care how they use it and it will be used against working people like you and me. This is why revolution is important. You can't just change things through laws. Look what the government's done here. They changed the law to take away people's rights and democracy. They've changed the law to do that. That's why revolution is the only answer. If you liked this, please give it a like and subscribe for more. My name is Mr. E. And please remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.